Here we are in Carl's shop, getting ready to fill the gas tank up. Well, the idea is to fill a, about a two ounce gas tank with butane. And it seems like an easy task, but sometimes it's a little tricky. First thing I do is measure the empty weight of the tank so you know what it weighs when it's empty. And then when it was full, I measured it and I have another number that tells what it should weigh when it's full. The trick now is to get the butane out of here and into here. And the way they do that is with a, an adapter. The first adapter is this device which connects to this device. And the reason for this is that sometimes you have this type of connection and sometimes this type of connection in a can of butane the adapter, the filler nozzle fits right on and just goes right on. This tank is almost empty so I can't use it. Okay, I gotta see this one up close. Okay, and that's... Now this one requires, this is much more typical because a lot of people use them as camping stoves but, and they always have this notch in them which requires when you have a stove, the stove will hook right in there. But for what we're doing we have to put this adapter in and lock it in place and now we have that same thread there that we had here so the adapter filler tube can go from here onto here. And the way the filler tube works is it has a movable tip and when you push the tip in it lets the gas out. But actually in our case we'll be doing it upside down and it will let liquid out. You can see liquid come out or gas and liquid. So now in here, there's a valve that has a little tip on it, and this filler will go down and sit on that tip. And when I push together, this valve will open and that valve will open, and the fluid will start to flow from this can into that can. And actually you'll see it get cold as the temperature takes place. Now the other thing I'm going to do is open up the valve a little bit, so that as the space inside gets filled up with fluid, the air that was trapped above it has a place to go. And that actually, it won't be air at that point, it'll be butane gas. But the idea is to fill this with a couple of ounces of butane liquid, which is what's in here. So here we go. I'm going to push down, and hopefully no leak there. And... Okay, so the gas is transferring down into the tip here with a little bit of a leak which I don't seem to be able to control but it's also coming out here so we know that there's fluid going into the tank okay I'm going to check the weight it's not full but we'll see how we're doing so this thing's supposed to weigh 7.33 ounces when it's full And right now it weighs six ounces. So, according to this, there's hardly any fuel in this. But it's working. Working like mad. Well, yeah, I smell it. So now we have a new tank and everything's working smoothly. Now you can see the cold on top, the frost on top of the tank. Yep. The frost forming on top of the tank there. Let's check it. The whole tank's real. Okay. 
Okay, so empty, it was 5.85 ounces. And now we've worked on it in a while and put some in there. And it's up to 6.5 ounces. It needs to get to 7.3. So we're about halfway, I guess. 6.45. Yeah, we're about halfway. You have to very carefully align the point of the Ronson valve to the hole that's in the end of the mm -hmm. uh, adapter. Because if you don't, you can really damage things. Well, there's a, a point sticking up inside the, the opening in the tank that has to go up inside that right. tube. And it's got a hole in the middle of it to let the fuel in. And it's a tiny little hole. That's why it just takes so long. Because if you pushed it in and it wasn't lined up, you'd bend the tip, the point that's coming right. out of the and tank. Then you also get gas flying all over the place. Well, when you see the fluid spit out of the valve, that means it's full. This would be a very exciting video. <laughs> waiting for it to fill. If anybody watches it in its entirety, they're crazy. Well, then they'll know how long it takes to fill it. You just tell them how long. <laughs> well, meanwhile, while that fills, we'll look at some of these other beautiful objects here. This is a gorgeous steam launch that Carl has built. And it is with a slide valve engine in it, the big powerful slide valve dirty. engine. Don't film that. And uh, yeah, Carl says it's a little dusty. Well, that's part of being in a shop. And over here, the boat we were sailing just yesterday. Or okay, working. spit it out. It's full. Okay, oh, it's just spitting out, and we missed that, but now we're weighing it. And look at that, it's all totally frosted. Totally frosted, yeah. And it's exactly at the full rate. Seven point three three. And you'll see that get you'll see the liquid spit out. Right. You can yeah. hear it. Yeah, we see droplets coming out. Yeah. So one of the problems of this whole arrangement is overfilling the tank. So what happens when you overfill and you hook it up to your steam engine, liquid goes down the line instead of gas. And when a liquid gets to the little tiny jet orifice, it can't get through, so it stops the whole business. And sometimes it'll actually block the orifice to the point where it has to be taken apart and cleaned out. So what you don't want is liquid coming out, even though you fill it until you see liquid come out, then you let a little bit out so that you don't get anything but gas coming out when we hook it back up to the boat. Okay, and you're tipping the tank to help the liquid come out right. as you open that valve. And so it started out at 7.33, and I spent a little bit off, and so now it's 7.3. But if it's horizontal and goes in the boat, we're pretty sure that we won't get that. Some people disagree with me that that's a problem, because I guess if you just wait, the orifice will open up. So now we'll put it back in the boat. Here's the, here's the copper pipe that goes down to the carburetor. It mixes the butane with air. The butane goes in this hole. The air goes in that hole. The two go in together. And there's a round plate in there that lets the flame come up in a circle instead of a point. The butane tank fits in the boat like this. And it's not fastened in, it just sits on the studs so that it's easy to remove. And then I, I make up this connection here. Which this knurled nut screws onto the thread, which happens to be a quarter, one quarter 32 threads per inch. And I'm doing it right, it's going to close. We're going to do it tighter than yesterday because we had a leak here. Okay. So now we have gas, and the next thing we need to do is put water in. And the way you put water in is you open this. There's this tube with a slot on the end. And 
And by the way, if you look down there, you can see you know, in the hole. Yeah. This pipe coming up is coming up through the flue so that the boiled water, I mean, it turns into steam and the steam goes up that pipe, but then it gets turned back around and down to the flue and then it comes back up and it comes out through the valve. And the whole reason for that is it's, a, it's like a, a superheater. So the steam that comes out at one temperature gets hotter when it goes up through the re, because of the reheater. That's what the superheater is. And then the flue, and then the chimney just sits on top of that. But not all the boilers have that, and it's a very good feature because it makes the steam hotter when it goes down, so it loses less energy in the transit and has more expansive energy when it gets to the engine if it's hotter. The ones in Australia don't have them. These ones from China do have them. We're about to put water into the boiler, which is now almost empty. And I have a syringe here with a hose that is optional if you can use a funnel or something like that if you want. But this makes it very easy. 150 milliliters of water in the syringe and the sight glass. And what we're going to do is fill the boiler with water until it's two-thirds or three-quarters of the way up the sight glass. That way it leaves a head of air above the water that can turn into steam and have some compression. Otherwise, the water can't boil because it's under pressure and all you do is get hot water out. So you have to have a place to make steam and that's the head above the water that we're now putting in. So the water's coming in. And they're just, just coming up in the sight glass now. Right, and that's the sight glass there. I think we're putting in 200 milliliters. Three quarters of the way up. So here comes the rest. But that's the right level right there. And now we put the top plug back in. Okay. And then we put the chimney back. Just plugs in. And shut this valve. And now when we make steam, it'll build up pressure on the upper part. And when there's enough pressure seen on the pressure gauge, like 30 or 40 PSI, maximum on this is 80 PSI, but if it got to 60, this valve would blow because that's a pressure safety valve. And that's a pretty important thing on a boiler because if things go wrong and it doesn't let the steam out, uh, rather than blow up the whole boiler and make a problem and actually be a health hazard, the safety valve will pop up and let it'll, it'll, uh, let the steam out so it can't get past about 60 PSI. Okay, so we have fuel, we have water. The next thing we need is oil in here. And the problem is that it's full of condensed water right now, so we're going to extract that. And not very much came out. It has a drain, but it's too hard to reach, so I'm not using the drain. Okay, with the oiler empty, we'll add oil now. I have another syringe with steam oil in it. This is not normal oil. It has to be steam oil, which is designed to mix with a hot steam. Regular oil won't cut it. Car oil. Okay, so I'm putting this in until the oiler body is full. Pull right to the top. Yeah. So it didn't take very much, but it's really important to lubricate the engine. And the top goes back on. I probably pushes some oil into the engine, but that's all right, or into the back of the line, it doesn't matter. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure that the trap is empty from the previous run. The steam exhaust leaves with oil in it because we have oil injection here and it doesn't get all used up by lubrication, of course. So the part that's mixed with the steam goes in here. The steam condenses and the oil sticks to the sides of the inside of this. And 
by that swirling motion of the exhaust gas inside, and the oil will separate from oh, this. And so what we want going up the stack is not steam mixed with oil, but steam with no oil in it. Another syringe, and another suction to pull out the, the contaminated water, water with the oil mixed into it. Now we're going to just make sure it's dry. You can see how contaminated it is with oil. Okay, now plug's going back. There it goes. This doesn't have to be particularly tight because it's only the exhaust pressure. So we're not going to crank it down just to put a little... Just a little twist on it. Okay, so water, fuel, oil, one last step. Trap is clear, and the one last step is machine oil for the moving parts of the engine. Now the oil that comes from here lubricates the face of the cylinders where they rotate against the trunk, but that's about all it does. So down here on the moving parts of the shaft, there's an oil cup, and that gets some light machine oil in it. It's not the same as the steam oil. This is light machine oil. Sewing machine oil is what you want. We're putting oil in the cup. A uh, little oil there, a little oil on the universal that we can reach, can't reach it all. And then the tricky part is here a flashlight will help. I think there's another oil cup. No, there's not an oil cup, but there's where the shaft, the piston shaft is on a thread there, and that needs to be oiled. And then, is there an oiler? And then between the where the where the main shaft goes through the trunk has to have a little oil on it. So that's kind of a messy job, but it's very important. Okay, machine oil, steam oil, fuel, water, trap. We're ready to go. And so, in order to get it going, we would light it. So the ignition most of the time works by having a little bit, not a lot, but a little bit of gas come into the bottom of the burner chamber and then and you light it from the top and a flame will go down and it'll light the gas coming out of the burner. So I'm going to just crack this a little tiny bit. And so I blew the flame back down and it blew itself out. Now it's going. Perfect. So now with the flame going a little bit, I can open the throttle further. And that's too far. You see the flame come out the top? That'll go away when it gets hot. On a vertical boiler, you can't see the burner flame. It's down there. You might be able to see some blue. Mm -hmm. Well, we could feel the heat. And in five minutes, we'll have 30 PSI and we'll be able to start it. Beautiful.